Alrighty, now what we want to do is get a kind of geometric understanding of the dot product because understanding the geometry um, alongside understanding kind of the algebraic qualities of the dot product allows us to um, apply notions of the dot product rather quickly. So I've said applications of the dot product here, but first let's talk about just the geometry. So let's look at the geometry of the dot product. Let's say we have two vectors, u and v in Rn. So our ambient space here is just n-dimensional space. And what we can always do, right? We know if a vector has the same components or if two vectors have the same components, then they're equivalent, which means I can move u around however I want, and it's still the same vector, right? Writing u in coordinates u1 through un is intrinsic of some base point or initial point, right? And so for any two vectors, without loss of generality, we can always assume that they share the same base point, uv, right? These are still the vectors u and v. They just are now kind of juxtaposed um, or conjoined at the base point. And there are two angles now. Um, if you look at a plane, like a two-dimensional slice of your n-dimensional space, right? There are angles kind of formed from putting these vectors together. There's theta here, and there's this other angle. Um, maybe we could call it like rho or alpha, I think I like alpha better. Um, we are interested in the interior angle. Meaning right now, theta for us is always going to be between zero and pi. And so of the two angles that these vectors make, we'll always choose the, the smaller, quote unquote, smaller one, right? Okay, we have a theorem that relates the dot product to this angle. And the theorem says that the dot product u dot v is the same as the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cosine theta. And so this gives us a geometric understanding right away, right? Angles are very geometric. Um, and we see here that the dot product can give us a description of this angle or the relationship, you know, radially um, between u and v. So let's just do a little example here. Let's say u, so we're working in R3 now. Let's say u is the vector 2, 1, negative 1, and v is the vector three, four, one. And we want the angle between them, right? Well, we know the dot product is related to the angle between them. So we can use this formula. U dot V is magnitude of U, magnitude of V, cosine theta, right? We can solve for cosine theta, and if you want to be super explicit, we can solve for theta, right? We would get from this that u dot v over magnitude of u magnitude of v is cosine theta. And if you want to be really explicit, we would get arc cosine of all that crap. Magnitude of v, this is equal to theta. Right? So to get this angle, we need to compute a dot product. We need to compute the magnitude of u and v. And then we need to take an inverse cosine of whatever the result is. So let's just handle this piece by piece here. Magnitude of u isn't too bad, right? That's going to be 2 squared plus 1 squared plus negative 1 squared. 
magnitude of B is going to be root three squared plus four squared plus one squared. So to simplify, magnitude of U looks like it's going to be root six. Magnitude of V looks like it's going to be root 26, right? And then we also need U dot V, which is going to be two times three. Sorry, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to do this vertically. Take the transpose, right? Two times three plus one times four plus one times negative one. And this is all going to be equal. So we have six plus four minus one should be nine, right? And so what we're going to get here is that theta is arc cosine of u dot v, which is nine, divided by whatever, hang on, I'm bad at math. Let me take six times 26, that's 156. So root 156, right? That's what we have here. Because if you took root six times root 26, that would be the square root of six times 26, which gives us root 156. And if you plug this into a calculator, you get that this is approximately 0 0.766 radians, right? And for um, like perspective, remember pi would be 3.14 radians, pi over two would be 3.14 over two radians. And so this would lie in the first quadrant. Cool. So I wanna look at a special case here. What happens when theta is pi over two? Well, when theta is pi over two, cosine of pi over two is zero. And if cosine of pi over two is zero, that means u dot v is equal to magnitude of u, magnitude of v times zero, which means u dot v is zero. What we can deduce from this is that two vectors u and v are perpendicular if and only if the dot product is zero, right? So we have a way of understanding perpendicular vectors based on their dot product. Right. Okay. Now, next, I want to look at vector projections. This is um, so we've understood the geometry here, right? And seen an example and the special case when two things are perpendicular. This case is important um, in a future application. But first, let's look at vector projections. So here's our first quote unquote application. Okay, so what's the projection of a vector, right? Well, let's say we have these two vectors, u and v, and we want to look at the component of v in the direction of u, right? You can see here the vector V would be the sum, like the vector sum of V parallel plus, and we would call that vector V perpendicular, where V, whoops, right? V parallel here, this is a vector. parallel to u and v perp here are perpendicular. This is a vector parallel, oh, I'm losing my mind, perpendicular to u, such that v equals v parallel plus v perpendicular, right? And so 
what we're looking at right now is this V parallel. We're looking at how is, like, what are the components of V in the direction of U, right? And if you like physics or would like to see a physical example, you know, imagine you have a ball going down a ramp. You know, you have um, the direction here, like say the ball's rolling down a slope or something. And let's say somebody pushes this ball, right? And then so there's like a force push vector here, right? Well, there's a force due to gravity, right? We usually just write that as G. And you could, you could ask, you know, what's the net force in the vertical direction? Well, and since F push here has horizontal and vertical components, you know, you would need to sum the force due to gravity plus the projection, right? How is this force acting purely in the vertical um, direction here? You can tell I'm not a physicist, but it, I can at least kind of motivate a vector projection for a, a physical example here. And so what we're trying to do is, is understand just that. We're trying to understand this V perpendicular. And you can see here, if you took like a light, and directly over or above V and U here, and you cast a shadow on the vector V and looked at the shadow along U, this is what we're getting. And that's why we call it a projection, right? Like a shadow would be a projection of some figure. And so we call this vector V parallel here, this is the projection of V on to U. And so in words, this is the projection of V onto U. And I always have students get this backwards um, and I'm guilty of it myself. This is inherently different. Let me put this in all caps. So different than the projection of U onto V, right? This would be like U parallel, and this would be the projection of U onto V, right? And so you need to pay attention to the subscript and what's just in the normal line of text here, right? Because in this setting, you know, if you were to look at U projected onto V, well, then you would kind of take a line extending, um, you know, a line with direction vector V, and then you would have to look at the projection there. You know, this would be your U parallel there. And so they're inherently different vectors, right? You can see this vector is very different from um, the first projection that we considered. Okay, so let's do an example. Um, but to do an example, we need to understand how to compute these vectors algebraically, right? This has purely been a geometric interpretation or description, which is great, very good to understand. And in certain contexts, that's the, the lens that you want to approach the problem through. But I'll go ahead and write this as a definition here. The projection vector, the projection of V onto U is defined as V dot U over the magnitude of U squared times the vector U. And this formula can be intimidating, but I promise you it's not. This is all a scalar, right? So we have to compute this stuff. I mean, we have to compute a dot product and a magnitude, but this is all just some number, right? This is a very convoluted way 
of saying we're scaling the vector u. And that makes sense, right? When we had our picture, we have u and v here, and then we have the projection vector of v onto u, you can see that this would just be scaling the vector u, right? In the picture I've drawn, you would be scaling it down. But if v was larger, maybe, this was drawn in blue, you know, if v was larger, then you'd be scaling u up. And so this is really just a fancy way of scaling the vector u, but it's a specific scale that gives us the projection. So let's do an example here. Let's find the projection of V, which is one negative two one onto U, which is two, three, negative four. Okay. So what do we need, right? First for the formula, let's compute all of these things separately. Let's find the dot product. So V dot U is just going to be one times two minus two times three plus one times negative four. That's gonna be two minus six is negative four minus four. That should be negative eight, if I'm not mistaken. And then we also need the magnitude of U squared, right? But what is the magnitude of U squared? We had a property in the last video that said, this is just the dot product of U with itself. And so if u is two, three, negative four, this is two squared plus three squared plus negative four squared, which is four plus nine. So we have 13 plus 16, which should be 29. So for our projection of v onto u, the scalar out front looks like it's gonna be negative eight over 29. And then we're scaling the vector u, which is two, three, negative four. And so you can see our projection vector here would be negative 16 over 29, um, negative 24 over 29, and 32 over 29, right? And so this would be your projection vector. So there's some more applications I want to talk about with the dot product, but I think it would be maybe better for understanding if I split this into another video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop here for now, and then the next video we'll um, finish up our applications with the dot product.